folks, let's get ready to um, to see what we're going to do today. We'll take a look at our agenda. My name is Dr. Jamie Alea, and I'm the director of the College of Science Advising Center. Today, we will give an overview of the services and resources offered by the College of Science Advising Center, and we'll give you an opportunity to ask questions after the presentation. We're gonna talk a little bit about um, COSAC services, mandatory advising, change of major, as well as uh, student learning outcomes and student and advisor expectations for academic advising. We'll also give an overview of the available resources such as tutoring, California Promise, and other additional resources. Lastly, uh, we will give you an opportunity to ask us questions. So let's get started. Ms. Colleen Sanchez will be, begin our presentation with some information about our college. Thank you, Dr. Leah. So hi everyone, my name is Colleen Sanchez. Um, I'm one of the academic advisors at COSAC. I do chemistry major advising and general education advising. Um, so the College of Science does have seven different departments. There's biological sciences, chemistry, computer science, geology, mathematics and statistics, meteorology and climate science, and physics and astronomy. And each College of Science department offers more than one undergraduate degree. The College of Science Advising Center, also known as COSAC, aims to provide timely and accurate information to enhance experiences, optimize pathways to graduation, and support the overall success for students. COSAC offers free tutoring to any student enrolled in a College of Science course at San Jose State and also encourages all students in the College of Science to utilize the many resources and services that are offered. COSAC currently operates virtually and in person. Our office is located in Duncan Hall 212. The center's hours are Monday through Friday from 8 to 12 and from 1245 to 430. Advisor hours are Monday through Friday, 8.30 to 12 and 1 to 4. Please check the COSAC website for our most up-to-date hours of operation. COSAC has a number of different staff available to assist students. The COSAC director is Dr. Jeannie Alea. We also have five professional academic advisors, Ms. Claire Guzman Ortega, Dr. Brent Peterson, Mr. Ryan Plock Branscombe, Mr. Jonathan Tran, and myself, Colleen Sanchez. COSAC's um, graduation specialist is Ms. Laurel Belk, and the administrative coordinator is Ms. Chris Dudley. Our tutor coordinators are Sai and Christian, and COSAC's career liaison is Ms. Judy Garcia. So COSAC offers different advising services. We offer major advising for certain college science majors, and we offer academic success and general education advising to all college of science students. Um, and we also offer change in major um, and minor advising as well. COSAC offers change in major workshops for students interested in applying for a major in biology, chemistry, or computer science. Students interested in applying to a major in biology, chemistry, or computer science can also request a change in major informational packet during their first semester at San Jose State. COSAC also has career advising for the College of Science students. Ms. Judy Garcia, our Career Center Liaison, has various drop-in hours, both virtual and in-person, Monday through Friday. We also offer virtual graduation workshops for College of Science students who are eligible to apply for graduation. Um, and more information can be found on the COSAC website. Now I would like to pass along to Ms. Claire Guzman Ortega, who will talk a little uh, more about who we see at COSAC and mandatory advising in the College of Science. So I'm gonna talk a little bit, so it's still Colleen Sanchez. I'm gonna talk a little bit about who we see at COSAC. Um, so the College of Science um, does offer um, for all college science students, um, academic success advising, general education advising, career advising, California promise advising, and graduation workshops. 
Um, we do offer, um, again, major advising for certain majors, which are biology, chemistry, and computer science. COSAC um, will see these students up to a certain uh, course, and then once they pass that course, then they will move on to faculty advising. So now I will pass on to Ms. Claire Guzman Ortega um, to talk more about who we see at, um, at the College of Science Advising Center, as well as mandatory advising. Sorry, my internet's being a little. Claire, are you there? Um, so I'm gonna just continue about to talk about who we see at, um, at the College of Science Advising Center. Please excuse the technical difficulties. Um, so um, we do also see some non-college of science students. So students that are interested in um, changing their major and applying to biology, chemistry, or computer science. Um, we do offer change of major workshops and as well as change of major advising where students can follow up. Um, we do also offer minor advising to any uh, San Jose State student that's interested in um, um, applying to one of our College of Science minors. So the College of Science does have mandatory advising um, for all College of Science students. Um, major advising is required for all College of Science students every single semester. Um, what this means is that every College of Science student does have an assigned advisor who they meet with every semester to talk about the classes that they plan to take in the upcoming semester, um, as well as to remove a registration hold off of their MyHSU. The registration hold is, that's placed, um, it means that you cannot register for the upcoming semester, which is why students are required to meet with their assigned advisor to make sure that they graduate in a timely manner. So for biology major advising, um, biology students in BA Biology, BS Ecology and Evolution, or BS Marine Biology, and have not passed Biology 30 and 31 with a C minus or better, and can one be with a C or better, we'll see Ms. Claire Guzman Ortega. Biology students with a concentration in microbiology, molecular biology, or systems physiology, um, and have not passed biology 30 and 31 with a C minus or better, and can one be with a C or better, we'll see Mr. Jonathan Tran. All biology students who have passed biology 30 and 31 with a C minus or better, and can one be with a C or better, we'll see their assigned faculty advisor. Now, I believe it is, I will pass along to Mr. Ryan Plock branscombe Thank you, Ms. Sanchez. Uh, yes, yeah, so I'm Ryan Plock branscombe one of the academic success advisors here at COSAC. I mainly work with uh, chemistry and mathematics students placed in the academic success program. So the first thing I wanted to talk about was chemistry major advising. So chemistry students declared, uh, declared as BS chemistry or BS biochemistry who have not passed Chem 112B or Chem 113A with a C or better, we'll see Ms. Colleen Sanchez for major advising. Chemistry students declared as BS chemistry or BS biochemistry who have passed Chem 112B or Chem 113A with a C or better, we'll see their assigned faculty advisor. And chemistry students declared as BA chemistry, we'll see Ms. Colleen Sanchez. I'm not going to briefly go over computer science major advising. So computer science students who have not passed CS146 with a C minus or better, we'll see Ms. Colleen Sanchez for advising. And computer science students who have passed CS146 with a C minus or better, we'll see their assigned faculty advisor. I'm not gonna briefly discuss geology, math, meteorology, and physics major advising. So for geology, students in all geology concentrations will see Dr. Blisnio. Students declared in all math concentrations will see their assigned faculty advisor. And students declared in all meteorology concentrations will see Dr. Tan. And finally, students in all physics concentrations will see Dr. Heindel. I'm not gonna briefly discuss the change of major process. So students must have an SJSU GPA prior to applying to change their major. And keep in mind, you can apply after your first semester at San Jose State at the earliest. 
Keep in mind that you must meet the impaction criteria for your intended major and complete the required courses with minimum grades prior to uh, applying to change your major. COSAC processes the change of major application paperwork, and you can double check with COSAC about the application deadlines. I'm not gonna briefly discuss academic advising and the relationship between the advisor and the student. So the definition for academic advising is as follows. Academic advising is a process in which the advisor and advisee enter into a relationship based on trust and support, where the advisor informs and guides the students with academic personal career goals that are consistent with the student's interests, values, strengths, and aspirations. With this in mind, I'm now gonna pass it along to my colleague, Mr. Jonathan Tran, who's gonna go more in depth with the advisor-student relationship and how we work together to achieve expected student learning outcomes. Thank you, Ryan. <clears throat> Hi, everyone. I'm Jonathan Tran. I'm on the Biology Academic Advisors here at COSAC. I specifically advise students majoring in microbiology, molecular biology, and systems physiology. <clears throat> I would like to go over some of the expected student learning outcomes when, for your time here at San Jose State. So we will work with you to gain a better understanding of the general education and graduation requirements. We'll also encourage you to discover and utilize various resources around campus. We strive to promote students to learn how to efficiently manage their time and plan schedules as they progress towards graduation. We also expect students to come to advising sessions promptly, prepared, and with questions or material for discussion. We will help you establish clear academic and career goals based on your interests and abilities and help you utilize university resources towards achieving those goals. <clears throat> Last but not least, we also want you to be knowledgeable about the degree requirements, university policies and processes, and also become knowledgeable of what you could do with your chosen major, such as career options and pathways. <clears throat> Next, I would like to go over some of the student responsibilities and expectations. Um, so students should take responsibility of, <clears throat> for their decisions if that affect their educational, um, <clears throat> educational progress and goals. Students should also come prepared and on time to advising sessions. They should also be knowledgeable about their degree requirements and university slash department policies and procedures. Students should meet regularly with their advisors during the academic year, especially if any issues or challenges arise. You should try to plan ahead and come prepared to office hours or advising meetings with questions or issues for discussion. <clears throat> Students should also define and clarify personal values and goals and provide advisors with accurate information regarding their interests and abilities. Keep a personal record of your progress towards meeting their goals. I mean, students should keep a personal record of their progress towards meeting their goals, and they should also be an active learner by participating fully in the advising experience. We also want you to explore and utilize campus and community resources and also demonstrate academic integrity and ethical behavior at all times. <clears throat> Next, I would like to go over the advisor responsibilities and expectations. So us advisors <clears throat> wanna make sure we collaborate with students to ensure student success. We wanna make sure we're knowledgeable about and effectively communicate the curriculum, graduation requirements and university slash department policies and procedures. We want to guide students in defining and developing clear educational goals while encouraging students to take responsibility for the educational plans, decisions, and achievements. <clears throat> we also want to be accessible to answer students' questions through virtual and online advising. We also offer a safe environment for students to ask questions and express concerns where individual values and choices are respected. Us advisors also evaluate student progress for degree completion and communicate any concerns that we may see. We also collaborate with students to create an appropriate response or recovery plan to address any obstacles that the student may encounter as they progress towards degree completion. Last but not least, we provide students with information and strategies for utilizing the available resources uh, and services on and off campus. Now I'd like to discuss about FERPA. So FERPA is the Family Educational Rights and Privacy Act. And FERPA is to protect the privacy of information concerning an individual students by placing certain restrictions on the disclosure of information contained in a student's university's record. <clears throat> Communications with the family and others, 
So in compliance to CAPERPA, your parents and other third parties do not have access to your records, and your advisor will not discuss any details of your records without your written permission. For this reason, your advisor will refer others to communicate directly with you concerning academic issues. You should assume responsibility for your education and any transactions with the university. For more information regarding FERPA regulations, please visit the Office of Registrar's website. And now I'd like to pass it to, back to Dr. Jamie Alea to go over the College of Science Canvas course. Thank you, Jonathan. We think it's very important uh, to communicate with students about advising and keep our students in the loop on what's going on in the College of Science and at the university. That's why we developed an advising information platform on Canvas to keep you up to date with announcements and informational modules. We're going to send you an invitation to join the College of Science advising on Canvas at the beginning of the semester. Please accept the invitation right away so that you don't miss important information. Similarly, uh, you, we will send you an invitation prior to or your orientation date to join the COSAC orientation on Canvas for the summer. Likewise, you should accept the invitation right away. After your orientation date, you can have access to Frosh orientation and advising all summer. We post the links to virtual advising on the orientation platform. And once you've accepted the invitation, you'll be able to access those links um, to advising over the summer. On your orientation date, uh, we'll be able to go over your, um, your schedule with you. You'll be able to view your schedule and you will already be registered for two to three major specific courses and required ed general education courses so that you begin your first semester on track to make degree progress. However, there may be space for you to add an additional course with the help uh, and guidance of uh, the COSAC advisors. We'll send you a pre-orientation communication in June with all the information that you will need. So make sure that you check your SGSU email every week. We will only communicate with you through your official SGSU email account. So make sure that you are in the habit of checking that regularly. Um, now, Brent Peterson will highlight some of the resources available to you through COSAC, the College of Science and the university. Hi everyone and welcome to San Jose State University. I am Brent Peterson and I'm the uh, Spartan Success Advisor uh, for uh, Math and Statistics, Geology and Earth Science, Astronomy, and um, the, the other one. <laughs> and, uh, I, and thank you so much for being here. I'm going to talk to you about, there are a number of resources that are available to, uh, to students. As academic advisors, our primary, one of our primary responsibilities is to make sure that students get plugged into the correct, um, into the correct resource to help them to be academically successful. Okay, and not right now I'd like to talk about a few of them. Probably the most important uh, a uh, resource that's available to you is COSAC Tutoring. COSAC offers one-on-one -on -one and group tutoring to, uh, for a number of courses. These include biology, chemistry, computer science, math, microbiology, and physics. Okay, now besides COSAC tutoring, there are other additional tutoring sources that, that are available to you. There is Peer Connections. They offer uh, tutoring for both STEM and non-STEM courses. There's also the late night tutoring at the library, at the, the, uh, the Martin Luther King Library. They offer both uh, drop-in and online tutoring that's available um, 8 p.m. to midnight. I believe that's thir uh, Thursday through Sunday. Uh, and then there's the Writing Center. For those of you who need a little bit of extra support uh, on writing, there is uh, that's Writing Center is a great resource that you want to be able to plug into. Now I'd like to talk to you a little bit about the California Promise program. Um, California Promise is a program that was established by California essentially to help facilitate and make sure that students uh, graduate in four years if you're a freshman, if you're a transfer in two years, okay? And now it is open to, uh, to all uh, California students who are California or who are residents uh, of California for the purpose of in-state tuition. Um, 
eligible incoming frosh and transfer students who are California residents um, can uh, plug into this program and it can help to make sure that you're on track to graduate in an appropriate uh, time frame. Now, what are the benefits of California Promise? Uh, you will get uh, advising that's specific and tailored to make sure that you graduate on time. There's also early registration uh, within your registration group. So for example, if you're, uh, if you're a freshman, you get to, to uh, register a little bit early before your, uh, your class cohort, okay? Uh, but the main thing is the whole purpose is it's designed to you for on-time completion so that you graduate in four years. Basically, attending San Jose State costs overall about, on average, $15,000 a year. So if you delay your graduation by a semester, it's going to cost you fifteen grand. By a whole year, thirty grand. So we want to make sure that that's not an expense that you have to incur until you graduate on time. Now, uh, the other requirements to be taking part in this uh, California Promise, there are two steps. Uh, you need to complete the pledge form and to opt into the program. You're going to find this on your to-do list uh, in uh, MySJSU. Okay. After you do that, uh, you're going to need to set up a four-year plan uh, or a two-year plan for, tra for transfer students. And uh, this planner is uh, is is can be a little bit tricky, but there's a bunch of resources and there's a link there that you can uh, uh, plug into and to help you basically figure out how to do it. Basically, you're making a plan that's going to help you get through the next four years. All right. Now, if you need help with that, other information about the California Promise Program, you can email me, Dr. Brent Peterson, and, uh, and I'll help you out. Now, there are a number of additional report sources that are very important. There is the Accessible Education Center, and they're designed to, designed to help um, support students who are overcoming various disabilities. And there's also counseling and psychological services. They're uh, referred to as CAPS, and they can help students with, um, you know, facing various health, mental, and relational issues. But also, they have a great educational counseling program that you might want to get plugged in, into. Educational counseling can help you with time management, improving your study habits, and general academic success strategies. Okay. Of course, there's financial aid and scholarship, and they can, where they can help you get plugged into the necessary finances to, uh, to fund your education. As I mentioned earlier, there's the MLK Library, and they have a host of uh, resources there. In particular, if you need help with technology, you can borrow a laptop, you can borrow a calculator, and there's other sorts of um, peripheral devices that you can that you can borrow, and even extended long-term loan throughout the semester. So you definitely want to plug into that. Then there's SJSU Cares. Cares is uh, if you're facing struggles with, uh, with food insecurities, housing insecurities. Or, uh, or even financial issues, uh, plug into SJSU Cares, and there's actually uh, social services that can help you get uh, get to the resources you need. Of course, there's also the Student Health Center, and uh, they provide a great number of, of um, resources and helping with the uh, if you have uh, they have a pharmacy, they got physical therapy, and uh, most of the services that are available to them are at no charge to you. So. You want to familiarize yourself with them. There's also the testing office, and this is really important. Uh, they offer both you know, testing and proctoring services for San Jose State students. Um, there is also where the uh, the PPA, the you know, the pre-calculus proficiency exam, and um, you want to be uh, if you're gonna if you're gonna be a science student, chances are you're gonna have to take calculus and you're gonna to have to take the PPA. And so that's where you wanna uh, you know, get all the information you can for, the, um, uh, for that particular exam, how to prepare for it. And there's also the university police. They offer, of course, uh, training and, and uh, regarding safety issues. And um, but also they have uh, escort services if you, if you need somebody to, to, if you're feeling unsafe for any reason, you want someone to walk you somewhere, you need a ride somewhere, they can help you out. Okay, so those are the resources, and uh, thank you very much. Okay, I'm going to turn it over to Dr. Leah. So we'd like to thank you for listening to our presentation. Um, and so now this portion of, um, of the session will focus on answering questions that you can uh, put in the Q&A feature of the webinar, and we'll be, um, we'll be answering some of those live, and then some of those will be 
uh, typing directly into the Q&A.